All right, hello again, and welcome back to our second uh, go around with this landscape that we started last week. Um, if you're if you're new today and uh, you did not uh, were not here last week, um, I believe in the chat the um, uh, the link for last week's part one of what we're doing today. Is, is listed so you can maybe uh, look through that uh, after class so you can kind of get caught up a little bit. Um, and if you haven't started it, you can just sort of dive right in and, and try your best to, to keep up with, it, with, uh, with what we're doing. For those of you that were here last week, welcome back. And we are going to um, uh, finish this today. It's always the best intention to finish it, but sometimes it doesn't always go uh, exactly the way uh, I had planned, but I think we're in pretty good shape for, for getting this one mostly done today. So um, the, the um, stuff that we're going to do today is, uh, is designed to um, really enhance what we started last week and get a lot of the more detailed uh, areas in, and uh, hopefully we'll polish things off here by the next, uh, in the next hour or so. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do the the supplies really quick here, um, but it's you know it's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, uh, black and white. If you've got if, if you've got black, that's great. If you don't, you can always mix it with some of the colors. Um, a couple of earth tones: yellow ochre and raw umber. And then your three primaries: uh, blue, red, and yellow. Uh, I've got ultramarine, cadmium, uh, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow. Um, you're going to need some paper towels or a rag, and you need some water. Um, you're obviously going to need canvas or a board or, or paper to paint on. Um, and then we're going to be using some uh, gel medium today, uh, as well as the, uh, the paints. Um, and again, this is our scene that we're going to return to, the, the subtropical, very subtropical, uh, Abel Tasman National Park in New Zealand. And we will uh, do the finishing touches on this uh, today. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, I'm leaving it up there for you to do that. Um, you can kind of sort of take the screenshot, blow it up and put it off to the side so you have a bigger, uh, a bigger picture to work from. Uh, I'll have one on our, on our work screen, um, but it will be pretty small, but uh, feel free to use whatever works for you best. Okay, so with that said, um, and also I want to um, give everybody the opportunity uh, to ask questions uh, today in every class. I mean, this is, part, I, I think, a, a fairly fun part of the, the whole process is if you've got any questions as we're working, um, please uh, ask, put them in the chat and they will get relayed to me. And then, um, and then we can have a little uh, discussion about what is on your mind. Okay, so let's return to our screen. Um, okay, hey, so Mike. here's, what, yes. Sorry, we already have a question about Gesso. Great. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Which to buy? And then also the medium, does it should be clear or white or gel? Uh, clear or white or gel. The, the medium that I'm using um, is clear and always clear. Um, there is some medium that looks white, but as far as I know, medium is pretty much 95% of the mediums that I've ever seen have been clear. Even the stuff that looks white, when you put it on, it's effectively clear. Um, so I don't know the, the medium, the, the medium should have no pigment in it. That's the idea. It's basically like water. So you want it to be as clear as possible. Um, and a gesso, um, the stuff that I use, um, or have been using for these classes is, there it is. I'll show you the two versions that I've got here. Um, these are the two Artist Loft brands. So this is a professional grade, and this is more of a uh, academic level is what they call it, or student grade or beginner level or whatever. This is just going to be thicker um, and more pigmented. So you'll have, you only have to use less of this. Maybe one or two coats is all you'll need for this. This, um, which is being thinner and a little bit smoother and flows a little bit better. Um, but you will probably need to do about three coats uh, of the white gesso to use it effectively. So that's the difference. You pay a little bit more for this, but you use a little less. So that's the idea um, for the 
sort of different levels of gesso. Yeah, so there's there's that. Okay, um, okay, uh, I think we're ready to get started. So the only thing I changed from last week is I added this little thing here. And if you look in the picture up here, you can see that little branch sort of um, coming into the scene. That's what I have in mind. Obviously this branch is not, it's not a white fern or anything like that. It's not an albino fern. Um, it is, the idea here is I wanted to make it lighter so that you could see it. And here, let me get it even closer. I'm gonna lift up my, my picture here. And hopefully you can notice that what I did, and I did this earlier with the intent of showing you what I'm exactly showing you now. This has got a lot of texture to it. It's very thick. Um, and this took uh, pretty close to an hour or more to dry. So that's another reason why I did it early is because I wanted it to be dry by the time that we're uh, uh, doing our class. So um, if you wanna do that, I'm actually gonna do another one almost exactly like this right off the bat. So I'll show you how I, I applied this. Um, and then I'll show you what I do after it's dry. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a two-parter. So let's get back to our broad view. There we go. All right, so what I have done is, let me just move this slightly to the left. There we go, that's better. So I got my water here. I've got my paint from last time here, which is in my handy dandy dampened uh, little palette. And this paint is still in really good shape. Um, I had my little wet paper towel here, which I will discard. Um, and this is all pretty much fresh from last week. Uh, everybody at this stage who's been following along probably knows that uh, acrylics dry really fast. So that little setup there uh, creates a little bit more, um, actually a, a ton more time that I'm able to, to use uh, these paints. Otherwise they would have been dry you know, by the end of the day. They're, they're very, very fast drying. Okay, so what I did over here is I used this paint, which is, it's just our, um, it's actually our professional grade uh, titanium white. And this is where the different grades of paint come in handy. If I were to use, um, you know, sort of, this is not the right color, but it's it's the different uh, grade here. This is the academic level. This is much soupier and runnier. This is much thicker and more, uh, it sort of holds its form a little bit better. And that's what I'm after when I'm mixing uh, these colors uh, that are heavy and have texture in them. I, I like to use these professional grade thing, uh, a professional grade uh, paints. The other thing you can do is you can find a, a gel medium that is called like an impasto medium. Um, and it's, you know, it's basically like the, the same stuff here, but it's just even thicker. And so you can add a little bit of that to give the paint even more body. Um, I don't have any with me and I, I'm not gonna use it because it slows the drying time and I want these to dry as quickly as possible. But if, if you're out and about and you wanna try some of this sort of heavy uh, paste grade or, or um, impasto, uh, gel medium, uh, it works uh, really well to sort of add some heft to your uh, to your paint. So what I'm going to do here, wanted, over here, Mike, oh, gloss or I, matte? Does it matter? Um, it really depends upon what you like. Um, I think what I've got is sort of a what do I have exactly? Let's see. Um, I don't think they actually say in this one, but effectively it's a gloss medium. I like, I like a glossy surface. I feel like it, it makes the color a little bit richer. Some people don't like the shine. Um, matte is a little bit better if you're working big, so you don't get any hot spots on it. Um, so really you just kind of have to figure out what you, what you want and what you like um, when, you're, when you're doing a, a painting. And that applies to anything, uh, you know, whether you're using acrylic or uh, oils or gouache or watercolor. There's ways of making things matte and there's ways of making things a little bit more shiny. There's even sort of an in-between satin that you can get too. So it's really personal preference. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did here, um, but instead of this white, I'm actually gonna try and match the color of this little branch here. You can see it right there, this little branch. And 
I'm going to I'm going to lay this in here. So I'm going to try and be pretty accurate with the color that I that I have, and I'm going to do it um, by taking my life into my own hands a little bit here, and I'm just going to try and do it into this into this white. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, but I'm going to do it in an incremental way. So I'm looking for a kind of a nice green. That's a little bit more earthy. Let me just get you up closer here so you can see what I'm doing. So this is more of like a forest green. I want sort of a bright, ferny green. So um, I think I'm gonna get out my, let's see, this is a cadmium yellow. Let's try that. Want a little bit more brightness here. And then I will do my other blue, which I believe is a cobalt blue. Where did hey, it go? Mike. Yep. So Susan says she's heard of people adding talcum powder to give more body to the paint. Is that something? Um, yeah, calcium carbonate. Uh, uh, I think that's what it's called. But yeah, it's just sort of a thickening powder. Yeah. Um, uh, that works. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Anything that's going to, I mean, Rembrandt, who was, you know, one of the great artists of all time, uh, he ground up glass into his, into his paints and it worked wonderfully. And it, it sort of had, he used oils, so he was not using acrylics. Acrylics were not invented back in the uh, 1600s. So he, um, he did, uh, you know, like a powder, like a talc or a, or a calcium, something like that. And he also used uh, the the uh, ground up glass that he had in his studio, and it worked wonderfully. Sort of re what it did, it effectively kind of um, added a, a like a kind of a kaleidoscope effect. It sort of would the light would come into the paint, and it would kind of shoot out and uh, make these wonderful little. Um, kind of shiny, shimmery uh, passages in his paintings. All right, so what I'm doing here, so I'm just mixing up, I got the right green now. Now I'm just gonna add it to the white. And so, I think, I believe that's also, yeah. So they had said, can you use molding paste as well? Molding paste, yes, um, as long as it's for acrylics. Okay. Um, all, all of this is, it has to be compatible with acrylic paints. So just make sure you're not getting anything, anything that's designed for oil because they, they are, um, you know, they are very distinct mediums. And I made the mistake, I, I teach classes um, in person and I, I started when some people are working in acrylics and some are working in oil that I made the horrible mistake of saying, well, try this. And I gave her some acrylics and she was working in oils and she's like, I don't think that's right. And uh, sure enough, it was not, but it, it was luckily caught early. So um, not too bad. All right, so I've got a green here. I think we can all agree that this is a green. That was terrible. All right, um, I think that's about right. I may add a tiny bit of yellow. I'm trying to be really precise with this because um, I, I really don't wanna go over it again. So I'm just going to add a little more yellow, kind of brighten it up. I, I actually like to, to use it sort of this color and then, and then color that later on. But I want to show you both methods. So I'm going to do this. If this doesn't work entirely, I can always modify it later on. All right. Now, initially, when I laid, when I laid the, the white in in that one area that I showed you, um, I did it with a brush, just a sort of a small brush. It was about like this. Uh, yeah, about like this. So it was a bristle brush and it was small. It was, you know, you know, sort of no bigger than my fingernail, something like that. But I really didn't like the way it was laying the paint down. So I switched to the very sophisticated tool of a kebab skewer, a stick, a toothpick. Um, and this is the way I'm gonna lay this in because this works exactly the way I want it to. 
um, and it works better than a brush. And because I'm using really thick paint, um, it is, uh, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really putting on there and pushing it around. I'm kind of just dragging it as you'll see. So let's just uh, have a look at this and I'm gonna do it right in this little area. So I'll spotlight that area. Just get right down in there. And it's a bit tricky. So I've got I've got a I've got a bunch of it on here, and it's you know it's pretty heavy. Maybe that's a little bit too heavy. But I'll just start it like this, and I'm just gonna you know sort of follow the, with with um, with uh, ferns and things like that. There's a very definitive structure, and so I'm just dragging it across here. So I'm getting the uh, initial stalks. Let's see, I'll put a few more in here. And, and, and as I'm going, I'm kind of twisting it. So it sort of gets some fresh paint. And then when it starts running out, let's see here. So this is new. If you've been following me along in these last few months, I have not done this before. I've do, I do this all the time in my own paintings. Um, and I thought this would be a nice uh, painting to do something like this in. So uh, adding a little bit of, of heft to your paint is a really nice quality. And this is the, the beauty of, of, you know, all this is dry now. So adding this stuff in here is um, really easy. You don't have to worry about, you know, sort of the paint mixing or, or anything else like that. So I'll stick with that for now. So I've got, you know, I've got a few stalks and with ferns, um, as you may or may not know, they, they sort of start kind of at the base pretty, pretty long. And then as they get towards the end, ooh, that was pretty thick, but you know, it's all right. And you can see how I'm able to sort of get these lines in here. So it adds an even an, an extra layer. I'm not only am I laying the paint in, but I'm also adding some, some grooves to it. Always replenish. Let's see if I can get the, uh, the paint in here so you can see. Yeah, just barely. There we go. All right, so now we got both of them. So I'm just building it up. And if you know, we go back to the the, the paintings of Rembrandt. Um, if you want to see the end results of this, look at his his portraits, like from later in life. You know, sort of like the 1650s and 1660s, especially in his uh, self portraits. You can see where he would put this in here and then he would just take like a stick and kind of carve out the wrinkles around, you know, sort of the, his, his own eyes. He was getting old by then. Um, and it was really an effective uh, and very distinct process that he used. I'm not being terribly picky about uh, getting everything right. You know, you can, you can kind of, it's the beauty of landscape is like, oh, that leaf isn't quite that length or quite that width, but there's not a botanist out here measuring all this stuff. So you don't have to worry about being too precise. I'm just kind of adding texture down the different. There we go. And this, this, um, this stick is not quite as pointy as this one. So I'm gonna get, get this one involved now that I've sort of laid in the, the, main, the, main, the main body of it. And you know, see I've got a little curly cue there on the end. I'm really gonna take advantage of that and just lay that right in there, right at the end. It's not very often that you um, 
you'll see a, a, a painter working with kebab skewers, but they work great. They got a nice long handle. They come to a really sharp point. I mean, if you don't like the sharp point, you can always cut it off. Um, they're great, especially for this kind of stuff. I've got a, I, I, I go out and buy kebab skewers specifically for painting because they work better than anything stick wise. There's probably some person out there in the woods who's uh, a painter and has harvested the best sticks and sharpened them to the perfect point for themselves. Um, I'm a little lazy and go and get my skewers at the supermarket. And so now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of, um, I'm just taking the, the paint that I've, I've already laid in here and putting it in. And this, this isn't just, I'm not done with this. You'll, as you'll see, I'll do it. I don't think the color's quite right. Um, and now I'm just gonna do another one. You can do a, sort of a few extra ones and you can vary the thickness. This one's gonna be a little thinner. So maybe this one doesn't pop as much. So just adding some texture here, throw a little bit of this up over here. A few maybe sticking out over this way. I mean, having a variety of marks is always kind of a nice little feature that you can add to your paintings. Whenever you see, when you know, if you see the painter. You know, you always know a painter, at, if you ever go to an art show, all the painters are like this, and like looking at it really close because they want to say, how'd they do that? What is that, what, what is that mark? How can, I, how can I do that? Steal that idea, that's great. They reveal themselves, they tip their hands. That's their, that's their arch, art opening tell. All right, so let's go, let's see. So you can see how it looks from a distance, actually. Looks pretty good. Um, let's have a look here, see where else I can do it. I could throw in one over here. I mean, I really wanna spend some time with this. So I'm kind of gonna go to town with this. Now I'm really loading up because I wanna put this kind of big one in here. Twisting as I go, this is a much bigger one. And it really is a little bit of a finesse thing. You can do this with a brush. Um, I just like the feel of it and I like the look of it. And especially if I'm trying to create some texture, I just feel like this just does a better job. So, um, and if you don't have kebab skewers, toothpicks work fine or just a, a simple, a stick, even the back of an old paintbrush. I think this will be the last, last one of these that we do. We are gonna come back to these um, later, if they're dry, if they're not, I'll just use this as the example. Um, but I wanted to at least give you the idea and just show you the, the kind of possibility that are out there. Let's see, I'm just sort of following the structure a little bit, sort of this nice kind of lattice work of fern fronds, oops. Make sure not to dip into your other one. I'm painfully aware of how that can go sideways. Right. Just keep adding the paint. Getting a little bit low, but I think I'll have plenty. It's not the end of the world if you run out because it's, you know, I mean, the, the color is fairly straightforward.
what are other people using? I'm sure you don't, don't all have kebab skewers. You can just type in the chat what you're using. Always, I've used a variety of things in the past. It's fun to see what other people come up with. All right, let's get that one right to the edge there. Okay. We've got a few people saying toothpick. Toothpick, yep. Yeah. And this this is something that's like, it, it takes a little while to get the feel for it, to get the right consistency of the paint. So if it's a if it's a bit of a blotty mess in the beginning, um, don't worry about it. Just think of it as learning curve stuff. It's like, all right, this is new. Yep. We've got Let's somebody try. using a small pellet knife, another person using a knitting needle. Yep. Ooh, knitting needle, that's a good one. Make sure you clean it so it doesn't get too rusty. Yeah, that's nice. I'm just sort of laying it across like this, just sort of blotting it. Let's get a little close up of that so you can see a, bit, a little bit better. So I'm just kind of dabbing it on there. Oh yeah, it looks good. Do a little bit more this way. I'll just throw one in there for the kicks. All right. Okay. So I think I'll 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 leave it at that for the for the time being. And let's see what the overall effect here is. Just have a quick overall look. Yeah, so that's an, I mean, here's another one I could add. I'll just, we'll just clean off my skewer here to sort of throw that in. I'm gonna concentrate on on, on these for the time being um, and, and come back to them, hopefully if they set up. If they don't, I'm just gonna sort of stick with this one. So what I'm gonna do with that is I want to, um, I, I kind of wanna make a, uh, a glaze um, using, those two colors that I, I was um, mixing earlier, which is cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. Those are some nice, um, a nice combo to get the root of this green. Um, so I'm going to just take a little bit of water here and I'm not gonna mix white in with this. This is a, a really important point is um, I, I think white generally speaking, especially for beginning painters, is used way too much. Um, because it doesn't take it doesn't take a lot to to get the color that you want. And people will say, oh, it needs to be a little lighter. I'll just lighten it up. Well, I, I think the moment you put your paint from here over to here, it automatically lightens up. So in other words, it's a slightly transparent, unless you're you know, scooping up paint like we were there and, and you get exactly the color that you put down. Um, just by putting it down on canvas and spreading it around a little bit, it's gonna come out lighter. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that green with no white in it, and I'm just going to um, basically colorize. Let's, let's get a close up of that as well. This, this will be a good one. This is all good stuff. So I'm just, my, my idea is to get these two little passages uh, more or less equal. So I'm just, like I said, not using any white. If I'm using white, I'm using the underlying white that's, that's on this kind of thicker bit. So I'm just kind of painting over it. So if you want to try, um, a part where you where you do this, where you put white down first and then you tint it. I always feel like I have a little bit more control over the color by doing this way. Cause it's like, oh, that's not quite right. Then I can maybe add a little bit more yellow, you know, put a little more yellow, make it a little bit more of a bright color. 
I'm like, oh, that's that's maybe a little bit too much. Um, then I can come in with a little bit more blue and I can kind of go back and forth. Um, so either of these two ways work. Um, and I, I really will leave it up. It's really personal, personal preference. Um, I mean, in an ideal situation, you know, this or not an ideal situation, but sort of in historical, in a historical perspective, this would have been done uh, mainly in oil paints. So in, in other words, the, the, the oil painters would have laid down a real heavy, thick white impasto passage and then just sort of colorized it with, with another, with a, with a glaze. Um, but you can do it just as easily with acrylics. And in some ways it's easier because, you know, that only took me an hour to dry. Whereas if this were oil, this would take days to dry. It's thick, it's, it's you know, it's a really heavy paint um, and oils being much slower uh, going, it, it's gonna take, you know, a lot more time commitment to get something like this done. I was able to do all of this in, in, a, in a fairly short order. And I'm not even done with this yet. I wanna show you one last thing that is, I think, kind of the piece de resistance of all this. Um, but I'm gonna let that dry first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to, to other things. And what I'm gonna do at this stage is I'm really gonna get out my, my, uh, my, my uh, finer point. Um, do I dare go that small? I'll start with this one. And then I'm going to move. So I'm, I'm getting out two rounds and two um, nice. Uh, this one's got some, some spare fibers that are off of it. So this is a size eight. These are sort of the nice uh, Vienna Artist Loft brands uh, brushes that are really, really nice. Um, you can, there's tons of different brands out there, but these are just a little bit more expensive. You, you know, with, with brushes, you're going to get what you pay for as usual. Um, and then I've got um, a number one. So this is pretty big. This is really small. I'm gonna start with this one and then work my way down to this one. And with this, what I'm doing is I'm just gonna be putting in some, some darker details in here because there's a lot of scrub and things uh, in, the, uh, in the brush there that I want to kind of get a little bit more developed. Hey Mike, what's the size of the brush that you're using? This one is an eight. Um, the other one that I'm going to be going down to is a one. One's really small. Um, that's for like people that paint little, you know, army soldier figurines and things like that. Uh, so, you know, that's that's getting down to the nitty gritty. All right. So I'm just going to mix up kind of a nice dark here. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of black. I'm going to do this fairly easily, streamline it. Some blue. And then I need a little bit of umber, raw umber. So raw umber, black, and blue. And that's going to give me a nice dark color. And I just add the, the black and the blue to give it a little bit more variety rather than straight black is, is just pretty kind of monolithic. And blue is a nice. nice darkener of pretty much any any color you got down if you want to make a darker version of it you can add blue and it'll be cooler too all right and i'm going to use um some of my professional grade uh, gel so here's that I'll just put it right there as you can see it. Um, and I'll get my palette knife cleaned off, get a scoop of that. And I'll just have it over here. And this just sort of increases the flow a little bit. I'm just putting it right next. Can't really see that color. Let me show you that. Let's go a little bit wider. All right, there we go. So I'm over here. I put my gel just to the next, to the right of it. You can, well, let me just put it over here so you can see it. There we go. So we'll do that and we're off. And so I'm just gonna start with some gel and then I'm gonna pull in some of the dark color here and move this so I don't paint that. And just add a little bit of detail to the stuff that I've already started over here. Okay. 
using the right brushes is a very important part of understanding how painting works. I mean, I could do this with a much bigger brush and they, and they would look horrible. <laughs> they would look like they've got, you know, all kinds of galls and things on them and it would look a bit like a bit much. So using this nice fine brush and I'm also, yeah, let's just go in, go in a little bit here so you can see a little better what I'm doing. And I'm going over top of things going with, you know, here, I'll put in, a, I'll put in a thicker one here. So this will be a nice thick branch. And then with the same brush, I can kind of just tie in some smaller, more intricate little, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna need to go down to that number one brush too much with this. Um, Cause this is doing a great job. I'm loving this brush. This is this is perfect for for what I want. And again, I mean, this is a number eight. You, you know, it doesn't have to be a number eight. You could have a number six. You could have a number four. You could have a number ten, perhaps. Um, it it really depends. So I'll just go up here. I'm just going to move around, try and get a little. variety, maybe sort of firm up some of the stuff that I've already established. Maybe go a little wider angle, there we go. That'll work. Lots of back and forth today, but that's all right. And you can vary the amount of um, medium. The more medium you put in, the better flow you'll get, um, but it will also not be as dark. So um, you just kind of have to find uh, the happy medium, so to speak, pun intended. So there we go. Keep loading up that brush. You have a given like a favorite brand or type of brush that you like to use. Um, well, th this one here, which I'm loving, is is actually an Artist Loft brand, which is sort of the Michaels home brand. Um, I use a lot of brushes from Utrecht, um, but really, I, I found that if you go into an art store and you you know you're looking around and you find brushes in you know sort of a real small brush like this number one brush and you, you end up painting or paying, excuse me, uh, you know, like three or four bucks for something like this. This is going to be a good brush. Brushes are today are, um, you know, a lot of people complain about supplies and things like that. Brushes are pretty, um, they're pretty good. Um, and they're pretty consistent across all brands. Um, so I'm not, you know, I've got a lot of different brands. You know, it really depends upon where I am and uh, how much money I have, and you know, what I what I already have and what I already what I already or what I actually need. Um, so really, I think it's you're going to get what you pay for is the short answer. But I, I do like the, these um, these uh, Vienna. They're a little bit, um, they're a little bit soft, meaning they're not as, as rigid as some other brushes. Uh, but for something like this, I mean, they're kind of perfect. They're, they're, they're almost like watercolor color brushes, but a little bit firmer. Um, and they really hold their shape. Uh, so, you know, just, just find a, find a brand that, that kind of works for you. And, um, you know, experiment a little bit. And Claudia wants to know if she can use Prussian blue. That would work. Prussian blue, you, you can uh, at your own risk. <laughs> Prussian blue is very strong. 
Um, it's, it's actually great for mixing up the kind of green that we're looking for, sort of that bright, uh, really vivid, um, kind of like Kemlon lawn green, you know, really vibrant, um, almost suspiciously bright, vibrant is what I'm getting at, but they, they, uh, that, that particular blue and cyan blue, uh, they, they make some really kind of intense, intense colors, intense greens, especially. The ultramarine blue is, um, is a much uh, gentler blue and it's not nearly as, um, as strong and, and kind of lemony and, and acidic as, um, as the cyan or the Prussian blue. I think Prussian blue actually has cyan in it. And can you use gesso in place of medium? Uh, no, gesso is, is a completely different animal. Gesso will, medium, it does not add any pigment. If you added gesso to anything that we're doing now, it would make it white because it's, it's got a ton of white pigment in it. So uh, yeah, medium and gesso are completely different things. Gesso is only for treating the surface that you're gonna paint on. Like this canvas, underneath all this paint, it's got a white coat of gesso. Um, so that, that's, that's the reason you have gesso, is to kind of prepare your canvas for its, um, its application of paint. And Mary would like to know what the what is the name of the gel? The gel, uh, the gel that I'm using. This so. is I'll show you the actual jar. It is professional slow dry blending, slow dry blending, slow dry. I guess I need to say those two words together. It's right so, behind. I have to say it's right behind the picture. Slow dry blending gel medium, professional grade, which means it's a little thicker. Um, but it it really works nice. It's a it's a really good flowing uh, product. It does exactly what I'm after at this stage. All right, we're getting close to kind of getting over here. Is this dry? Oh, it is good. Now I could go in here. I would probably, if I had a you know a thousand years to work on this painting, which I don't. Um, I'd probably add some greens in here um, and maybe some, you know, just sort of some lighter values to sort of, you know, add a little bit more foliage and things like that. Um, but we're getting to the point where um, I, I want to get to to move on to something else. Uh, so, you know, this this is something where you can just be as as um, in depth with the detail as you want. Um, or a little bit more impressionistic. It really is up to you. I'm just gonna sort of at the tail end here. Another nice thing about this, this brush here is, is when, you, when you dab it down, it sort of almost naturally forms kind of like a, uh, a leaf shape. So I'll give you an example there. So it's got a nice little kind of point to it when you put it down there, almost look like a bird sitting in the tree or something like that. So that's, that's that. I, I will do a couple applications with that smaller brush. Um, and remember, it, as you're working with acrylics, you never want to sit your, you never want to sit your brush down like this if it's still got paint in it. If you think it's still got paint in it, just sit it in the, sit it in there, sit it in the water. I'm going to clean this one off and be thorough with it and be a responsible brush owner. Um, and clean it out entirely. That's probably your best way because whenever you sit it in in the in the thing, it it can also it can also bend the fibers, you know, kind of bend them like that. Um, and it may not look bad, but over time, it does sort of add a little bit of wear and tear to the brushes. All right, so I'm just going to do basically the same thing I did here. Um, get a little medium on here, and and just do a, a little bit more kind of even finer work in here. 
And again, this is really something that you could spend as much time with as you want. But this all being, these are all of the darks that I'm using are the darkest part of the painting. And generally speaking, from a kind of a design standpoint, you want, you want to keep those really dark passages in the foreground, because those are the things that act as a really nice frame for kind of all the subtle work out here. So I'm just adding a little bit of depth there. All right. There was my obligatory using the number one brush. I got, I got more mileage out of the other one, um, but this one can definitely sort of finish things off. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to go over here and add another layer. Um, and this is, this is kind of, uh, this is secrets of the old masters kind of stuff. Um, this is another old Rembrandt trick. And what he would do um, is he would take a dark and, and brush it on here really, uh, really lightly. And I'm going to show you in a minute, show rather than tell. Um, and I don't think this brush is I, quite ideal for this. I might use something that's a little bit bigger. Um, I'm going to use a flat brush. So I'm going to use one of these flat uh, synthetic bristle brushes. And I'm going to mix up, um, I'm going to mix up a color that's, let me see if you can see what I'm looking at here. All right. So I got this, this dark over here. Let's get that, get over here so you can see it. So I got that dark that I've been using that was sort of black, blue, and uh, a little bit of what else did I put in raw umber? And what I'm going to do to that now is I'm going to, I'm just going to modify it slightly. I'm going to add a little bit more blue. So I'll just take some of this cobalt, pull some of that in. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow into it just to get it sort of in the, in the spirit of foliage. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow. But I still want it to be primarily a dark color. So it's just kind of a dark green. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use water. And I'm really going to dilute it. So, you know, probably over 50% water. And I'm going to do I'm going to start with even more. And this is a really cool trick. And I got to be kind of prepared for this. So I got a little rag. This is, this is a trick. This is an actual trick. Um, so I'm going to drag this, that color, this sort of dark green, bluish green. And I'm just going to drag it across here. Now what's happening? So that's what I'm doing. And so what's, what's going on here is gravity is basically doing a lot of the work for me. So it's, it's just kind of going down into the recesses of this uh, plant. And I'm just gonna kind of drag it across here. And that's gonna pull off some of the, and it's kind of hard to see it, but it's, it's kind of doing it, you can see it. Yeah, it's, it looks great, <laughs> it looks great here. I don't know how it looks on the camera. I think it's. I think it's actually in pretty good shape, but you can see how the, the dark color, now I'm gonna add a little less water. So I'm just mixing up kind of a nice, so less water now, I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm just gonna drag it across again. And you can hopefully see how that dark color just kind of sinks down into those pits. And so it creates this, and then this is just, gonna, I'm just gonna drag this across and get it off of the surface. Ooh, and that's actually pretty cool because what happened there is a little bit of that green came up with it too. So I'm getting some, kind of some of that yellow highlight coming out there as well. So it creates this kind of nice, really actual 3D uh, look to it. So it's got 
you know, that sort of highest point is those brightest colors, the green and, and then the white peeking through in spots. Um, and then the dark colors have all kind of sunk down into, uh, into the, the texture of, of the foliage uh, that I set up earlier when, you know, I did this about an hour and a half ago or two hours ago, um, and that was allowed to dry. Um, and if you really want to get uh, kind of fussy with it, and I think I will just, just, to, just to do it, is you can take your number one brush. Where'd it go? There it is. Take your number one brush. Where'd you go? Oh, oh, there it is. Take this brush, and I'm going to load it up again, maybe with uh, sort of a lighter version of that green that I had. And then you can just, oh, I'm going to need my glasses for this one. And then you can just kind of add some highlights. It's really hard to see when it's that close. So we're just kind of going back and forward a little bit. All right, I got some yard work going on out there. So just adding kind of another layer of highlights here. So all of this is over top of all of that. All that nice texture that I've created. So whenever you go to, uh, you know, a museum and you, you know, you see something that looks kind of like it's got a lot of texture like this. This is something that like, you know, painters like Titian and Raphael and, and then uh, Leonardo da Vinci would have done to sort of create texture for uh, jewelry, um, skin on, uh, you know, kind of a more character, you know, an older, person, an older subject matter. So where you, where you wanted that sort of depth of um, of the different paint layers. Sorry, I'm concentrating. So I'm losing my train of thought as I'm talking here. But you're going back. I started with this light color and then I added the green and then I added the dark and let that set in. And now I'm adding, going back and adding some more highlights. Um, and it really does add kind of a nice dimension uh, to the painting. And it, it really is a finesse thing. You, you do have to kind of practice at this kind of stuff um, if you're gonna use it on a regular basis, because it's not something that's just like, oh, I think I'll do this today. You kind of have to psych yourself up for it. Um, so, and then I would do the same thing I would do the same thing down in here, sort of add these dark little passages, kind of beef it up again. Same thing over here. Um, I've got a few minutes left, so I, I wanted to do a few other things. Um, and remember, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. There we go. So we got a lot more, you know, sort of stuff coming out here in the foreground. And another thing you can do too is, um, you know, like in here, I would. I would normally just let this dry. Is it dry? I don't think it is. Oh, it's so close. So this, this has been probably about 40 minutes because I think this was the first little area that I did. So it's, it's, we're over 40 minutes. I'm not gonna put anything over top of this because it's not quite dry. And if, if, it, if you try to do this too soon, I mean, essentially you could ruin it. So I'm just gonna save this for later. But you know, if you're in a hurry um, or you just wanna try, you can also just sort of be additive about it and meaning just put the, the kind of the dark touches around it, or I could have done this uh, kind of beforehand. But if I were to put sort of a wet wash over top of this, you know, it might, um, it might open up the paint a little bit because it's still wet. And that's really the, the worst case scenario for this. So I'm just taking this kind of finer brush here 
and just doing a little uh, direct painting around these uh, heavier. Just giving it a little bit more definition. But these little passages where the light, the real light and the real dark are right next to each other um, can be really kind of critical. I'm just adding a little more water now to sort of, sort of dilute it out a little bit. And again, once all this dries, I can come back with you know, some more of these greens that are right through here. All right, anybody having any luck on theirs? Hopefully this should be new material for a lot of people. I, I mean, I sort of figured this out on my own. It's not like something where it's like, you know, you learn how to paint heavy texture in school or anything like that. Just sort of figure it out on your own. The best part of this stuff is you just play around with it long enough and you just go, well, I think I just invented something new. And sort of learn how, and you know, I can kind of come in here with this one, add a few really dark passages in there. Don't want to overdo it. It's giving a little bit more depth. There we go. All right, what else? Oh, we're about done. So there is nothing else. Okay. So again, I could go through here and you know add some more some more little highlights. You see little spots where maybe the the tree is. Let me just do it real quick. The, like the, one of the branches has a little bit of just a little kind of highlight along one end. Just sort of add a little bit of. See, I can't help myself. And this is a white sandy beach instead of a yellow sandy beach. So you can kind of do it like back in here. Now just the last finishing little touches here. Okay. White sandy beaches. Okay. I think it's time to have a look and see how people did. If they are feeling bold enough to show what they've got, maybe we can do a few spotlights here and see what everybody has come up with. Oh, yeah, nice. It's not Ed. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, it looks really nice. You got, a, you got the idea down. Excellent. Is that pretty thick? It looks pretty thick from here, yeah. It should have some like some depth to it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, really nice. Great, excellent, excellent, excellent. Ooh, oh yeah, nice. Claudia, that looks really good. Much darker, sort of like a, a sort of a evening scene and that green is really popping out. But you can see how that really strong contrast in the foreground kind of sets, stages the whole painting. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Janet, all right, that looks great. Yeah, you got some nice little passages in there. And you know, if you're looking at it and you, you, wanna, you wanna tweak things, you can always change color. You can add a little highlights to it. So it's not just because you've got it down doesn't mean it's gotta be like that forever. You can always do a little bit of tweaking as you, as you look at it. Yeah, that's a, path, that's a pathway down the beach. Oh yeah, Sarah, that looks great. Nicely done. Yeah, good. Yours is much more tropical than mine was. I, I, I like it. You went for the full Hawaii feel. Nice. Liz, all right, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those look really good. Added some dark highlights around that. Um, some of that foliage in the foreground that looks really good. Oh yeah. Kylie, nicely done. I really like those clouds. That looks really good, yeah. And Cheryl, 
Yep. Oh, great. Yeah, you got a really nice sense of the lights and darks in that, um, in those palm fronds, especially on the on the right side of the painting, my left as I'm looking at it. That looks really great. Excellent. Oh yeah, Cindy, that one's got a really nice sense of depth to it. Especially that sort of off in the horizon, it really looks kind of like recessed back. Nice, very nice. Yeah. Okay, so that was, that was great. Um, there was a lot of kind of new stuff that I added in this one and you know, like I said, that I mean, this is, you know, I'm just sort of looking at this painting going, oh yeah, I want to do that. I want to do that. But once you start down that road of putting all this kind of textural stuff in and, and layering and kind of building up um, a, a sort of a richness to the layers of your paint, um, you can really, um, you can really kind of get a lot of mileage out of, out of everything. Okay. Thank you very much. This concludes the November month of landscapes for the Michaels painting uh, demos. Next month, it getting into the holiday season, um, we're gonna be doing some quick watercolors. So we're gonna make a transition into watercolors. And the idea is to just work fast, work loose, and maybe create a few gifts for people. Um, giving homemade gifts uh, is, is kind of a nice uh, idea. Uh, saves you a little bit of money and also makes it a little bit more special for people. So um, if you wanna start that, uh, we're going to be beginning those on uh, next, uh, next Tuesday. So I hope to see you then with your watercolors. And thank you all. That was really great. Um, the work was, the work looked really awesome. It was some really nice paintings. So well done. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.